Okay, so if you take notice, I temporarily reinstalled that upper cover so we can line up the timing marks because that's where the index marks are located is on that plastic cover. I also temporarily reinstalled the timing belt in its relaxed position because I want to demonstrate how you got to set these up and why I put everything in its original marks on the variable timing side and I'll let this side be the I'll let the intake side be the floater until I get the belt tight and then I can see if all my original marks line up on those bolts however I'm going to show you all the timing marks real quick and give you a demonstration okay we'll start here on the intake cam as you can see that one's pretty darn close it's a little bit off to the right however when we tighten up the belt you'll see that it will pull in and it will also line up see how there's a little bit of shiny underneath that bolt head once I pull that tight that will be covered up and I'm assuming it will line perfect and be in its original marks so that's the intake cam those are the two marks you're going to want to align there's a little index mark there I highlighted it with a paint marker now if you take a look over here on a variable exhaust timing sprocket you can see the upper mark that we have to be aligned with from this angle it looks like it's lined up however let me give you another shot it's actually one tooth off and that's why it's important to uh, do this as I'm going to demonstrate by the book and remember this whole time your cams are locked in so that's your set time and that's where everything's got to be locked and all these marks lined up I got this wire loom tied up so I could give you guys a better shot and also so I could gain better access however let me take this off for a minute Right there's the timing mark on the cam. And if you come up, you'll see it's right there. It's hard to see, but it's it's one cog off. It's one one cog off on the belt. Wish I could give you guys a, a good shot. But you can see it's lined up with the next cog to the right. Like you see there, if we look off to the left, you can see my yellow mark. The next cog to the right, you can see is lined up. So we're one cog off. Now I'll demonstrate how you're supposed to align these timing marks. I'll slide this belt back off. See how that moves? That's not the cam moving. That's the variable time mechanism. And we know we're one cog off. I'm going to reinstall the center plug. I took this out at the junkyard because I was going to remove this variable time sprocket. Then I opted not to because I didn't want to mess with the original set and figure it will save me some time and we're going to see if it does. Now if I have to move it, I will. However, I feel that as long as we didn't mess with the original marks and I got these and their original index marks, it's got to be dead on. So. I'm going to reinstall this center plug. Now remember, the cams are still locked in the back. And you're not going to be able to fit down in here with a regular socket and ratchet. So I'm using this thin, kind of, it's similar to, for using on belt tensioners. You could buy something similar to this. However, this is one I fabricated. I demonstrated these. I have a whole set that I made in one of my original videos. I think it was a Ford Explorer engine replacement for getting in real tight spots. It's pretty much a quarter or three sixteenths flat stock with a key stock, half inch key stock. And uh, therefore, you could install a socket and get in real tight clearances like this. Okay, and if you see, the cams are locked in, but yet that sprocket still moving. That's the variable timing. Works off of oil pressure. So um, we know we had to go one cog from the relaxed position.
Yeah, we were still one cog off. There you go. Now we're right on the money. Now if you look at it, those two marks line up perfect. If I put a straight edge across it, they're dead on. So now we got the timing marks lined up right. As you can see, there's the intake cam. Exhaust cam. Now remember when that's relaxed, it'll be one tooth off to the left. Then you turn it. One tooth. That's the automatic tensioner. Now you can see the time mark. On the crank. The two little notches. On the end of the cogs. You put it in the middle. Of the two. You see on the back side of the damper. Got the mark. Okay, now we have tension all set. As you can see, I got a little on the tight side of the window. However, I'll be fine. Um, I didn't have to turn a crank because if you remember, we left this sprocket loose. So, and this one has the tension from the variable timing. So it was pulling all the slack to this side anyhow. So um, I just went and turned the tensioner, locked it in place. Now as you can see, those marks are still aligned. The bottom marks aligned. And now we're going to see how close these old bolt marks are to being aligned. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look in the back, As you can see, it's right on the old marks. No shiny on either side. So that kind of proved my point for me. If you left everything locked in place, that's right on the money. That's right at the factory settings or Whoever had this set, this is the one from the junkyard, same cams and everything. I got it as a complete unit, but uh, their marks line up exactly. And that's still a line down there. All right, we're good, guys. I'm going to take and tighten that cam down, and um, we'll start going to the next step. Okay, now I'm going to take and remove the mechanism I used to lock the cams. Remember, this tie wire is just to hold the cams up in place. This mechanism actually locked the cams in place. How can I? Hang on, buddy. We'll take and remove these. And now I got those removed. See the notches in the back of the cams? Now you get a clear picture on how this device works. I pretty much took a piece of flat stock and I milled a notch on both sides. Then I machined this piece of round stock to fit in and be able to adjust it. I machined this side of it to lock into the can with very little play. So both sides have very little play. It's a pretty much precision. There's a couple thousandths, very minimal, maybe one thousandths on each side. And then you simply put both of them into the can notches and then you lock it in place 
and I will keep the cams from spinning in either direction when you compress the cams. And plus, when you're aligning the timing marks, this keeps the cams locked in place. Okay, now I'm going to take and attempt to reinstall the intake manifold. You see I got the gasket installed. The bottom bolts are notched. Same thing with the manifold. It's notched. However, I got to get these two coolant lines on. This is your inlet, this is your outlet, and this is just a vacuum hose of some sort. They got to be hooked up. Okay, I hope you can see this. I got the two hoses installed. So it's going to come in and go out. And that's where the small vacuum hose is going to be attached. This is a fly-by-wire setup. So there isn't a throttle cable. So that's what this uh, connection is. Alright, let's try to install it. I remember right, I had the supper hose off. I'm going to remove that upper hose. I don't want to work with you. I know, but I'm trying. I don't even know what I'm doing right now, to be honest with you. I'm going to try to get these two lower hoses lined up. Prior. Yeah, I remember that fuel line comes through one of these. I'm going to let you help me, buddy. I think the fuel line comes through this. It sure looks like it would come through this one here. And this PVC, PVC one came up through the middle. I'm not certain. Actually on the studs on the bottom bolts okay I got the two hoses started I got this one tightened up and I got the other one in place but I got to pull it in tighter before I tighten the hose clamp so I'm just gonna go around and I got all the bolts started I'm just gonna take and pull the intake in just using a swivel and a 10 millimeter I'm just gonna work my way around the whole perimeter making them snug for now. There's six of them total. The six inch extension you can get right in there for this lower one. Uh, I started running and routing the vacuum hoses. I seen they had a few of them messed up. However I figured it out now. As you can see that one there comes out, goes around, it's got a check valve on it. I don't know if you can see it down in there. That's it, it just comes down, round, Got the check valve, and it comes out, goes to a T, right down there, and it goes to fresh air intake. Let me see if I can show you. In case you have trouble with this, like I did. Goes right down there to the fresh air, right before the turbo. Out around. It's right there. Now on this side, it comes up and around. If you follow it, it comes around and then right back there is a purge solenoid. And from there, it goes to the charcoal canister. I know it's hard to follow. That one there comes from the intake. 
around back into the that's the inner cooling line and it goes around and up to the brake booster found this on the I'm gonna have to replace this line this is actually a reference line goes down to the turbo as you see it's all dried and split from rubbing so that couldn't have been working too well I don't know if you can see down there, but you can see that line I had to use regular hose clamps on. That lower coolant line for the intake. I guess you could say that's the end. Maybe opposite, maybe the out, but I'll just call it the end. So it goes down into there, and then you had that lower one. I'm not sure if you can see it good down in there, but you can see the hose clamp. It goes to that tube. Took a little bit finagling to get that fuel line to come up through then you remember the PVC positive ventilation hose for the crankcase goes to that center line there I'll have to tighten that clamp up yeah and we're ready to put the injectors back in okay another thing I did I don't know if you can see it down there but I installed the cam seals pretty much in the same manner as I showed you on the other seals, just put a little sealant around them and knocked them in. I know it's hard to see the back one, but as you see, I got them both in and seed it. I got some Vaseline here, I'm just going to put a little bit around the seals. Make it a little easier sliding together, plus it lube them up a little bit. Just O rings. Okie dokie. Feels like they all slid in nice. seat like so we get the retaining bolts Yeah, you don't want to overkill it. It's only aluminum. Alright. I guess we can put the upper hose back on. It won't be in the way. Also a temperature sensor I plugged in over here as well. I'm just gonna take and install this. This is just a dust cover. Nothing goes on the back of this can. If I had a distributor, that's where it would be. This is just a dust cap here. I'm going to take and knock that in. And that's installed. Now, if you recall where this pickup gets bolted, it's got to have a reference. Therefore, this gets bolted on the back of this cam. 
you'll feel the, the notch. Ten millimeter. I'm just going to take and install this pickup. And you can see it simply bolts on, this faces down and back. It goes on there like so. There's two little stubby ones. Really no adjustment right here. All done on that variable timing. So if you're out, this will let you know. And right, I'm going to install this motor mount bracket. It goes down on the back side here. Before I get too far ahead of myself. Install this top mount. Put the dipstick back in. That's real simple. You just slide it in. Make sure your O-ring's good. And just tighten up the retaining bolt. Got the back heat shields in. I'll give you a shot of that in a minute. That's real simple as well. Sorry it's so dark in here guys and I keep skipping around. I just put the air cleaner box on it. it just has a bunch of clips around it. Still gotta put the hose clamp on the tube and plug the mass air flow sensor in. I got the sensor, hooks up right there, and then the harness clips in. Alright. I'm gonna put this cover on and cover up these wires. Come underneath here, I'm on that oil drain for the turbo. I just wanted to let you see where I was peeking into the turbo to see if I had any internal coolant leaks leaking into the oil. And as you can see, it's it has some residual oil in the passage, but I pressure tested it. I actually took the lines off the turbo and pressure tested the coolant side not having any leakage so I just wanted to show you guys that I did do a test on that as well there's another thing of interest down here that was hard to see but it's a cooler an oil cooler as you can see I bypassed that as well and one of the steps of troubleshooting that I took to try to eliminate my process of elimination. Okay guys, I got everything back together. I got the coolant reservoir in. I got it topped off with antifreeze. Everything's clipped back in place. Got all the hoses hooked up. I am pretty sure I got all the air out of the system. We'll find out shortly. 
Got the battery hooked back up. Just giving it a once over. Make sure I got everything. Looks good. So I guess there's only one thing left to do. See if this baby starts up. All right, let's do it. Took moment of truth. always have noisy injectors on them. Sometimes when you start them up, you gotta wait for the lifters to pump up. These ones can take a while, especially if you have one that collapsed completely. And if you did, just hope that it does pump up. Um, yeah, those are the injectors. See how they quiet up when I push on them? I think this aluminum actually helps amplify the sound of the injectors. As soon as I take my hand off, it comes back. So we'll let this run until the cooling pan comes on and the antifreeze starts circulating. Now I'll get back to you. Sounds good so far, guys. This thing needs to pressurize almost immediately. That's a very good sign. I'm going to put a little breather tube on. Well, we started this up right around 3.30, so it's been running for approximately 35 minutes. Fan's been kicking on and off the way it should. She hangs right around half. She'll climb right up to that next mark, and then the fan will kick on any second now, and then it'll drop back down. But that's about it, guys. Getting ready to take her for a test spin. No lights. It's always a good sign. There goes the cooling fan. Probably too dark in there, but you can probably hear it. The cooling fan just kicked on. Like I said, I haven't seen it climb any higher than that point. Gets up to about there, cooling fan kicks on. And a couple seconds later, you'll hear it shut off. There you go, it just went off. I think we got it, guys. It's running much better, it's smoother, doesn't have that mist it had when it first came in. It's not building nearly as much pressure as it did. I'm not seeing any signs of the coolant getting into the oil. It's been running now for over an hour, I just shut it off. And, um, it seems to be going up the tent, circulating, fans kicking on, everything's working the way it should. I'm going to take it for a ride, run it a couple days. If anything new happens to pop up, I'll, I'll keep you guys informed. Let's know. Alright, till next time guys, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And thumbs up and rate this video if you like it. And I always look forward to reading your comments guys. So, uh, please do. Have a good one.